All right, guys, we're looking at um, 0654, summer 18, uh, paper 41, and this is question three. All right, we've got a question about a, dr a farmer driving a tractor. All right, and you're given a whole load of information. It's a bit of a sort of information dump on you guys. You're told the initial speed, four meters per second. You're told the final speed, six meters per second. You're told the time, 12 seconds. You're told the mass. 4,800 and you're being asked to calculate some stuff. Now even before you read a question like this what I suggest you do is you just highlight the variables. Sometimes they give you too many variables, alright? Um, that's completely fine. There may be something in there that you don't need but it's just good to write things down, to put down your symbols and again try and jog your memory as to what you're needing. So for example in this case the stuff we want are is F and A and if you're really not clear, we've got all these variables M, V, U, T, F, and A. All right, we've got a lot of them. Well, you might remember that F equals M, A. Okay, we know M. We don't know A. Okay, and we're going to have to use these guys to try and build our equation. Okay, I know this is simple for me to say this because I know these answers. However, I really encourage you to write things down, especially if you're not sure and that will give you more clarity and it will jog your memory, okay? In this case, the equation that we want to use is, well, we want to do it twice actually, it's a four mark question, yeah? Which asks you first to calculate the, well, it's best actually to calculate the force, but is that is via acceleration. And these are two things we don't know. So actually we're doing two uh, calculations, okay? First one and then the second one. The first one is for acceleration, A equals the difference in the speeds divided by times, it's the rate of change of velocity. Okay, that comes out, it's our 6 minus our 4, divided by 12, 1 over 6, 0 0.167. Okay, and again, F equals to M times MA, 4,800 times 0 0.167, comes out with a nice, comfortable 800 newtons, okay. Um, here there's no need to worry about significant figures etc you could call this 0 0.17 if you wanted you would get a slightly different answer for eight, than 800 that would be fine as well you wouldn't lose any marks okay you're then asked you're given um you're in the same situation but we want to know the increase in the kinetic energy of the tractor hopefully we're remembering now that kinetic energy is one of our slightly more complicated equations we're not simply multiplying things together. We are um, multiplying the mass by the square of the speed and then dividing that by two. Okay, key question here is to, well, key thing to do really is to look at the number of marks. Okay, you'll notice down here it's three marks. There's a reason it's three marks. It's because we're not simply being asked to calculate the kinetic energy. We're being asked to calculate the increase. In other words, you're being asked to find the initial kinetic energy, that's over here, the final kinetic energy, and find the difference. Okay, so this delta over here means change. Uh, it's a thing that physicists like to use, so if you want to be confident with that, that's absolutely fine. Change, in this case, is going to be equal to, is the final minus the initial, okay? Anytime you want to find the change, change in temperature, change in time, is the final, take away the initial. Well, in order to do that, I need to know half mv squared, which is simply the kinetic energy at the end, and half mu squared, which is the kinetic energy at the beginning. Okay, so this is our final, and this is our initial, and take them away. Now, what you could do is you could just calculate this, and calculate this, and take them away. That would absolutely be fine. What I've done is I've taken out the common factor of the m, all right, and I've said half m times v squared minus u squared, Okay, and here I want to make a really important point. This is not the same as this. There is a very common um, thing that people do here. What they tend to do is we want to find the change in the kinetic energy. So what they do is first find the change in the speed, square that, and then multiply by m divided by 2. This is not the same. Okay, do not do use this one. Use this one. After that, you've got a bit of maths to go through. Okay, and then we come out at a very big number, 48,000 joules. 
All right, another calculation. Notice we have nine marks of calculations so far in this paper. It's pretty amazing. Okay, farmer's on the tractor. He uses a power, a solar powered device to charge his battery. Okay, we are told that the solar cells are um, twenty five percent efficient. Now, symbol for efficiency is this uh, new. Okay, this uh, Greek N. You can use whatever you want. You could simply just write efficiency or call it some. People call it small e, okay, whatever you want. We're told that they have an output of 0 0.5 joules of electrical energy per second to the phone. And then we want to know the input per second. So that's really power, yeah. Well, our efficiency is the ratio of the energy out. In this case, we're always using the useful energy out times 100 divided by the energy in, okay. We know the efficiency we know the energy out, we want to know energy in, okay, so all we have to do is a little bit of rearranging and we end up with our two joules, okay. Notice in this case what I've done is I've substituted the numbers in first, okay, you would be more than welcome to rearrange for the, simply the um, value of E in, okay. In this case if you did some rearranging we bring this one up, okay, then what you would have is energy in is the energy out divided by the efficiency times 100. And remembering that efficiency should be in a percent form. Okay, last bit. The farmer uses a lens to focus the sun's rays onto dry grass to light a small fire. We've got the light rays coming in and then bending. The key point here is they must focus on the dry grass, so somewhere around about here. Okay. What I like to do is, I'm not entirely clear on what um, CIE would do with this, but what you tend to do is you know that um, light will change its direction as it passes through a lens, but the question is when does it do it? Now, in real life, what it does is it changes as soon as it hits the glass, so it bends and it bends, it actually bends twice, okay? However, in CIE, for a simplified way, you can keep that line moving forward until the middle of the lens and then just change the direction once, as long as the lines are straight and they focus onto the dry grass, that's fine. Okay, last point, we want to describe the difference between a real image and a virtual image. Okay, the real image is one which forms on a screen. Okay, it's where the light rays meet one another. Okay, and the virtual image does not form on a screen. That is the simplest way that I can think that you could define this. There are other ways, okay, however, um, I think the simplest way is to use the idea of forming on a screen.